Hello. Long time. No see. It's been a while since I posted a video. Hopefully you can hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, I've got the volume cranked up pretty high in my recorder and uh camcorder, so um because right now I've got something in the kiln. I got my ventilation fans going so you got this big bit of a background um so hopefully that one isn't uh too distracting so uh anyway i think the last series i did was making that uh bowl um using um iridescent glass and uh, red transparent glass and uh i didn't let you know how that turned out because it uh, unfortunately um ended up thermal shocking um, a couple of days later I and mean, I think uh, what happened was I wasn't quite paying attention to the volume of glass I had and was using so uh, I think I probably may have had my uh, annealing schedule a bit too aggressive uh, for that thickness of glass so uh, I just gotta pay more attention um, to what I'm doing next time uh, as far as getting things weighed out so uh, anyway that's that's what happened there and um, I think I had a yeah I've got a couple of videos up there where I tried live streaming and I think that'd be fun to too but uh, I need to get uh, invest in a better internet connection another internet provider or upgrade my package so I get better upload speeds right now the standard Time Warner package only got one megabyte upload and that just does not cut it for just kind of doing something live um, just thought that would think it would be fun to do I think I'd have to upgrade the turbo but uh, anyway um, this new series I want to do is um, getting into well showing how I do what I call <laughs> a fusaic and uh, I don't think this is anything, I don't think the concept is anything original. The way I kind of thought, of, came about doing this, uh, came up with this idea, was in the process of incorporating fused glass components into a stained glass panel. And here's one that I've done. And, uh, and when you're doing uh, trying to incorporate fused glass pieces, the precision required by um, at least this particular method, copper foil method, uh, need to have things fit together very fairly well. And even with a, a low tack fuse, um, you end up some gets, getting some shrinkage and irregularities. And so it's just kind of a pain trying to get uh, nice, even solder lines they just kind of uh they're kind of, just kind of all over the place here some of these are kind of nice and thin and these are a little bit fatter in between the pieces so i was kind of a bit frustrated with that i mean this is fun it's in its own way uh, doing things this way but it was also kind of frustrating so i was thinking well you know uh screw precision i mean what if i didn't have to be precise and then all of a sudden i just thought um well why don't i try doing a mosaic using fused glass components then I can take him to whatever fusing level I want to after I've got my general design drawn out I can either go for a full fuse or attack fuse and I can also mix up COEs in the same uh, piece um, I think this is I think these pieces are COE 96 and these are COE 90 I got some reactive glass uh, going on there and so uh, I, th I thought I'd give it a try and I'm quite pleased with uh, the overall effect here's one example and oh I've got another I've done several of them yeah tight space here here's another example so uh, yeah using this method you can you know come out with a general design um, 
and they can be as close fitting or as far as, well, maybe not as far as apart as you want, but you want to have them reasonably close, but uh, you get, at least I find it's just more flexible um, way of doing things. Um, so, because I can mix COEs on the same piece, um, can do that with regular stained glass as well. It's just the precision aspect that's a little bit more painful to get with the uh, regular fusing and you're kind of limited to just doing a low tack fuse and here I can like I said I can do a low tack fuse I can uh, do a full fuse like I did with these components here and uh, so I think there's just a lot more flexibility in this method of doing things and another thing I discovered um, is that these pieces are glued to, um, I think it's three sixteenth inch acrylic sheets using uh, E6000. And I kind of discovered uh, if you play your cards right and you don't use glass that's really super, super opaque, I mean more of a lighter opaque color, uh, these would make great sun catchers. You know, I mean, right now I've got the I've got the backing on here, but uh, if you just uh, I kind of discovered that by holding this piece up to my lights here and noticing that the light was shining through. It's not going to happen that much here because I got this uh, dichroic on there. But uh, you know, if you play around with stuff, um, you can have a nice sun catcher or even uh, use this method to make a light box. You know, just have the acrylic piece and the lights backing it up. It can. Uh, where it does work, it does make the colors really pop out. It's really cool. Um, it's got these dark lines and these bright uh, lights, shining pieces coming through. But uh, anyway, this is more just a standard picture. I use uh, with a quarter inch foam board behind uh, the acrylic glass. So, uh, acrylic glass, it's not glass, uh, it's plastic. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Keep in mind this is unscripted, so I just kind of say crap from time to time. That may not make sense, so uh, I just kind of have a ballpark idea of what I want to say, and then I just kind of go and ramble, but uh, anyway, so I'm just going to take you through the whole... Um, design process here uh, of a new piece. I got a frame. Got this um, custom made at uh, pictureframes.com. It's about roughly 11 and a half, I think. Um, at least the picture itself can be. This is about 11 and a half. I think this is mostly almost 12. Uh, on the inside, if I remember correctly. But, uh, yeah, I usually like to keep my frames simple, either store-bought, uh, cheap frames, or whatever, you know, if people want to buy this stuff and reframe it, they can, you know, if they don't like the frame that it's in, but, uh, I'm not interested in spending a lot of time or money investing in a frame when the glass that is the foe is, you know, kind of the center of, of attention. Um, I suppose in some way a good frame will draw your attention to a picture, but I mean, that's not something I'm interested in doing or thinking about that much. So um, so anyway, uh, I've got a sheet of paper. I've got the inside diameter. I think that'd be correct. The inside measurement of this marked out using Sharpie marker. I actually made the square a little bit smaller. Excuse me. Uh, probably about a total of a quarter inch. Basically an eighth inch along the side, smaller than the edge here. So um, I've got some room for grout to be on the outside of the uh, picture that I'm making. So. That's kind of what I'm doing there, and it kind of gives me, um, well, it, gives, it shows me what space I've got available. Um, there's the maximum amount of space I have available to arrange components on here, let me put it that way. 
and I have some, a bunch of these made up. I kind of had a vague idea in mind of what I wanted to do. And this is, uh, these are COE 96. And this is two types of streaky glass. One's red. And uh, you've got the red streaks going horizontally. And you've got this blue streaky glass going vertically. So uh, I'm just going to... Yeah, just kind of start arranging stuff. And as with some of my other videos, when I start getting a little boring and just kind of arranging stuff, I kind of speed it up and throw in some music in the background. So uh, you're kind of entertained by this uh, weird music and this guy's hands dancing across his page. So. Uh, I'll just go ahead and push this down. So, kind of sort of played around with some ideas on this uh, piece, but I'm going to uh, pursue things a little bit further. And I thought of using these little components to kind of divide this area into regions. And then... Um, what I'll do is I'll draw these regions. I'll come and take the pencil and draw around them fairly, marking them fairly heavily. Because what I got, what I do, I have a um, one of those um, what you call it? What do you call them? Lead light boards illuminates the whole area. I'm going to set this down and make a copy of it, and then start cutting out these regions and then drawing patterns on these regions or. I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of making this up as I go along, but that's kind of a ballpark idea of where I'm kind of going with this. And uh, you kind of get to be along for the ride. So this is uh, as usual with what I'm doing. Your mileage may vary, and this could be a very easily be a train wreck in progress so uh, let's see what I can uh, let's see what I can come up with here let's kind of arrange these uh, randomly on here let's see and hopefully I'll have enough of them I um, had like a handful of them originally, and then I uh, thought, hey, I could incorporate these into another uh, fusaic and do something interesting. So I fused some extra, but I uh, don't exactly know if I've got enough of them, so we'll find out here like that and I'll pull this, push this all the way to the end um, so ah what I've got cooking in my kiln right now is I'm fire polishing a uh, pattern bar melt I decided to bite the bullet and get myself a glass saw and uh, one of the one of the cool things is, is that unless you're doing this professionally which I'm not um, or you, you have some other you know professional glass shop doing other things I mean uh, his glass works, works with uh, shot glass, so he's got to have the professional gear. I mean, uh, a uh, glass tile saw, just wet tile saw, you know, over at, uh, you know, can cost upwards to 800 to 1400 bucks. But uh, the cool thing is, is that uh, if you're just kind of doing this sort of part time ish, hobby ish sort of thing, a cheap tile saw will work fine and 
what you need is the good blade. That's what will make the difference. So, uh, so I bit the bullet. I got a uh, tile saw from, uh, what was it called? Ah, Harbor Freight, Chicago Electric. And with a 20% coupon, the saw and the stand came to um, like 300 bucks. I think if I dug around some more, I probably could have found some more coupons elsewhere, got more of a discount. But uh, and the blade itself, and the blade itself was starting to push half the, a third of the cost of the uh, um, saw itself, and I got that from his glass works, and that was like a hundred bucks. So got a wet tile cutting saw, glass cutting saw rig for. 400 bucks. Now, including shipping and including um, a little, uh, whatchamacallit, can't remember what that is. It's aluminum, some sort of, not aluminum. Basically, you cut a slice off with your diamond blade, and that kind of reveals more diamonds, and that uh, makes it uh, basically ref refreshes the blade, but I'm not going to get into that. So anyway, um, I've got one cooking in, uh, this is my, this is my first attempt and uh, at it. So, and the nice thing is you actually end up with uh, two sides to a pattern bar melt. You have this more organic, looking part and this is uh say looking from the top down if you put your pieces on here and they fuse down this is how they melt down but then on the other side you get something that's more geometric more oh i don't know precise you know so that's kind of cool in its own way as well so uh if you ever get into this um Basically, you end up with two possible options here for what your front, quote-unquote, front is going to be. You've got this, the organic side, and then you've got the geometric side. And I guess you would call that geometric. Um, so, and uh, actually, Bullseye's got a real good video of, uh, um, of doing uh, pattern bar melts and the kind of... Uh, prominently display the more geometric side rather than the organic but both of them are cool in their own way so I'm rambling I'm just kind of doing something pretty random here and I actually have a few pieces left uh, so <laughs> I wonder if I want to do something with these or save these for another project. Yeah, let me see. I mean, there's nothing hard and fast about the design that I'm doing. I mean, this is completely random. And I'm just trying to decide whether... Yeah, okay. I can put that in there. Nice thing is, is when you make these little components, you can either fuse them together in another project or use them in another uh, fusaic. So, uh, it doesn't go to waste. That's what's kind of nice. And uh, got my wife kind of bouncing around upstairs. She does acrylic painting. She's recently got into making her own shoes. She started doing that just kind of out of uh, frustration with the shoes that are available in stores because none of them seem to fit right. And she's kind of like, darn it, I'm going to make my own shoes. So that's what she's doing. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. 
kind of want my regions, my spaces here to be open, yet consistent. Is that the right word I'm looking for? Kind of semi, some sort of semi symmetrical. Let me see what I can do here. Because I wanted to have sort of a central, uh, centrally, central cavity here for putting stuff in um so i don't know i mean i'm not uh not sitting here waiting for inspiration to zap me because this is a random design and uh i'm not big on realism i don't i don't have the talent to do realisms i may enjoy doing sort of geometric patterns and general psychedelia uh, for designs, but uh, any kind of realism wasn't my strong suit. You should watch me try to draw a dog or any other kind of animal. It's, it's a hoot. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, I don't know. I mean, since, since this is random, see, what I plan on doing is taking... Um, what you saw in those other fusaics there, uh, white glass, and either overlay them with dichroic, or maybe making, taking one giant piece of fused glass and doing some sort of scene or pattern or design or something like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know exactly where I'm going with this. But that's, that's, that's part of the fun. Um, Kind of make things up as you go along. So, yeah. Let me see if I want to. If I want to try to use up every last stinking one of these in here. I do. I don't know. Okay. I kind of do want to have. All right. Let me let me play around with this a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. I can just go ahead and stop that there. This is kind of sort of centered here. Like I say, this is a random design. So I think I'm going to go with this. I'll have some, a few leftovers here, which is not a uh, big deal. Now, what I'm going to do is roughly trace around these, pressing fairly hard so I can transfer and again the nice thing about this is that you don't need to be anal retentively precise like uh, like I'd have to be if I were doing a more traditional um, stained glass Tiffany panel or uh, using lead channel my mom used to do that she used to do stained glass and uh, uh, and use the uh, lead uh, what do they call it lead channel I think it's called lead channel um, yeah rather than Tiffany she's done she did both but uh, she worked with lead more and I did some back when I was younger and actually I didn't particularly care for working with the lead because actually that stuff's kind of nasty <laughs> to work with because you are working directly with lead obviously you're supposed to wear gloves which back then I didn't 
I don't think she did either. So if, if we're if the uh, if our family's a little bit off, you understand why. <laughs> uh, so yeah. far away here. should have brought out, figured out a better way of doing this using my little, uh, my little table here. We could have used a smaller piece and put it on there to spin it around. I got, got this idea from glasshopper.com, good resource for fused glass ideas. And that little uh, turntable there was one of them. I thought it was a good investment. I just uh, should have used it today. And I didn't use it for other stuff, but uh there with all the yellow brick road. You totally lost. Um Okay. Well, I've got the basic design. I just need to think about uh, what I'm going to put, fill these voids with. Am I going to use large pieces of glass? Or to kind of fragment things like I've done on the other one. Um, actually, I had in mind of actually just using multiple colors in here, small pieces, and I'm drawing uh, I'm using pencil right now, but I'll go, if this is my final design, I will go over these using Sharpie markers when I actually transfer this to um, my template which I'll cut up and then use it to cut the glass with. Uh, so um, Yeah, I think that's, we're off to kind of a good start, kind of see how I'm subdividing this area. I just need to decide, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do in the surrounding regions, whether I'm going to do more of the same there, or, these are fairly small pieces. Um, and yeah, I'm just trying. I'm almost in. Yeah, I need to think about this some more. Exactly what I want to do here, but uh, that's a start. That's the. I think I probably got enough done for the night um, as far as this first video is concerned. So uh, I'll mull this over and uh, think about what I'm going to do and uh, then I will um, hopefully cook up another video for you um, fairly soon. So anyway I think that is it for now. Thanks for watching. Um, see you next time.